welcome, and thank you for joining us on this morning edition of WPNN. I'm Sabrina Bryant. The start of spring weather was teed off with an indoor event. The annual Winter Open was deemed a success this year. WPNN has the story. On the weekend of February 24th and 25th, the Penn Central Mall hosted an event for all ages. The Winter Open is in the fourth annual year. The YMCA had hosted in years past, but this year it was placed in the hands of the United Way of Mahaska County. The United Way of Mahaska County decided to try a variety of different ways to draw more people in. Yeah, I think that this was um, a lot more than we expected. We've had, our, we had a goal of 18 teams um, for our lunch tournament yesterday for the kickoff. We had 26, 26 or 28 teams that showed up. The proceeds raised from the two-day event will go to the 13 nonprofit partners of United Way of Mahaska County. We had an adult night. That was the first year we had done that. Um, and so we served um, wine and beer and just had a, a different kind of crowd that would maybe normally come to this. So it was great. We had about 60 people show up, um, even though it was a blizzard outside. Meyer says the campaign they typically make money from is a little down this year and used the Winter Open event to ensure they could get as much as they could to their partners. For WPNN, College Reporter, Kadeem Ellington. Look for more information about the United Way of Mahaska County at www.unitedwaymahaska.org and learn more about the events. A popular lounging area for students between classes and at night may see quite the facelift within the next year. The student lounge area in the Union may be home to a new kitchenette for students to use. This will allow on-campus students to cook or bake their dietary needs or simply get a meal in if they miss it at the calf. This might include two, two or three stoves and other kitchen gadgets that may not be allowed in dorm rooms. There is also the possibility of moving the lower floor game room to the pack to provide for more room and additional dining furniture and in-kitchen eating. SGA President Carly Schmalz commented and said that talk about what could possibly happen with the kitchen is forthcoming. The union was considered the best building option because security is in-house for monitoring in case of emergencies. William Penn students hit the big stage last week with a humorous Broadway production. Here are more details. Theory and Relativity. William Penn's spring production was recently performed on February 23rd, 24th, and 25th in the McGrew Fine Arts Center. About college students and the experiences that they bring to college and like their they're all stories from 18, from students that are 18 to 23 years old. What their goals are, what their parents expect from them, what happens when they go home when things have changed. So it's all about those experiences and why they're there, and then how they make relationships work and how they meet people. Director Anita Minart says that her small cast of seven has been working on the musical for around six weeks and was able to get so much accomplished in the short amount of time. I play a girl who was popular in high school and then she got pudgy the summer of her senior year and wasn't popular in college. Um, it's kind of funny because we're all kind of relating to our characters. This girl worked at Dairy Queen her senior year and I worked at Dairy Queen my senior year. So, um, and then I have a character that her mom dies before she goes off to college. Um, and then another one, she's like the, the uh, power woman, I believe is how they describe her. She's like doing her lipstick on the sidewalk because she's too busy to take the time to put on lipstick. Um, so those are kind of the characters. Since the cast was so small, many of the actors had to double or even triple up on roles to fill all of the characters. So we've kind of compiled Adam and Anthony into one character. He's a um, physics major, very intelligent, very book smart, but not very social. So you'll see me um, on stage. I have my head in a uh, math book the entire time. He doesn't talk to a lot of people, and that's, that's basically my role. Midterms start today, Statesman, and here are some tips to help prepare you for success. Focus on past assignments, tests, quizzes, and worksheets to refresh your brain on the subject. Make sure you study in a quiet, isolated area like the library in order to avoid distractions. The night before your exam, get a good night's rest, wake up early, and have plenty of time to eat a good breakfast for energy throughout the rest of your testing day. By following these tips, you should feel more prepared for your upcoming, upcoming exams. Good luck, Statesman. The Leader Speak series, hosted by the Digital Communications Program, recently started back up for the spring semester. 
The Leader Speak series continu continued with its fourth installment on February 15, 2017 with Sarah Derry, the South Central Iowa STEM Regional Manager. Derry discussed STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics with the William Penn and Oskaloosa community, as well as answered questions from the audience members. So we consider ourselves an economic development initiative that acts through education. The idea is to really um, get kids uh, and their parents <laughs> Um, excited about pursuing um, coursework and then future careers that involve skills in science, technology, engineering, and math, but then also helping them connect the dots between those course, the coursework they're working on and careers that they can use those skills in that exist here in the state of Iowa. The next guest speaker in the series is Daniel Bosklajan, director for the Center of Humanist Inquiries. He will be presenting The Wonder of Thinking at All on March 14th, 2017 at 6 p.m. in the Musco Technology Center on the William Penn campus. Well, approximately every two seconds, someone in the United States needs a blood donation, and just one donation could save up to three lives. March 28th, the Student Government Association is holding their blood drive in conjunction with the Missouri Valley Regional Blood Center. The blood drive is being held on the pack and will, will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Schedule an appointment or just walk in. However, between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m., there will be no appointments. Here are some tips for donating blood. Before you donate, get a good night's sleep and make sure you're drinking extra water. Eating fatty foods can affect the fat content in your body and make donation harder. So prior to giving blood, eat an iron-rich iron diet of leafy greens, meat, fish, poultry, and beans. During donation, just try to wear a Try to wear clothes with sleeves that can easily be rolled up above the elbow and try to stay relaxed by listening to music or talking with a friend. Directly after donation, eat a snack. After donating, drink extra water and avoid alcohol for the following 24 hours. Remove the bandage from your arm an hour after giving blood and clean the area well. Avoid any heavy lifting or strenuous activity for the remainder of the day and be sure to get plenty of rest. Again, the SGA blood drive is on March 28th, so get out there and save some lives. In recent months, becoming more mentally strong has been a goal for many athletes and coaches on the William Penn campus. WPNN reporter Becky Kopp has the details. Being mentally strong doesn't come naturally to everyone. Women's head coach Nick Rule states that it's challenging yourself to think in a different way. Not only is being mentally strong a mindset that one must challenge themselves while competing, but it is something they must strive to do in their life as a whole. The women's golf team have been doing what they call team development sessions since the beginning of the semester. The players were instructed by their coach to come back from winter break, having read a book called The Energy Bus by John Gordon. The book includes 10 rules that a person should follow in order to increase the amount of positive energy that a person has within their life. So what we call, a lot of what we talk about is productive energy. I mean, we're not expecting everyone to just be happy-go-lucky all the time, and people are going to have complaints and all that. But our rule is that if you have a complaint, you have to have a solution. And based on that solution, we can work towards results. And so it's productive energy, but productive energy deals with looking at things in just a more optimistic view in, in their lives. And you know, as, as coaches, our goal should not only be success while they're here, while our athletes are here, but our goal should be preparing them for life and, and helping them be more successful citizens, more successful parents, more successful people in the workforce. Like golf, the baseball team has both an individual and team aspect. The baseball team also has to compete for long periods of time and often have very long tournaments, which can be mentally draining on the players. To prepare, the team has their own way of getting ready for a game. Uh, mentally as a team, one of the things we do is right after our infield outfield kind of thing, uh, we get together uh, in a circle and we do, we say a prayer. Just us to have a reassurance that everything's going to be everything's going to be okay, no matter what. Um, and it kind of gets us into the mindset of it is now game time. It is now nothing else matters but the game. 
As more of an individual aspect, Corey Russell has his own way to keep himself mentally in check. I of my helmet that kind of tell me to, to stay focused because um, things are always going to go bad. You can't always have a perfect game, a perfect at bat, whatever. Um, so it's just little, that, that's kind of what goes for me, little, little notes. And of course I have my teammates, they, they're always there. So. But like most college coaches, Nick Rule still has a focus on performance while on the course. However, it may be a slightly different perspective than others to get the results that he wants. You know, when you're out there, we tell our players that I don't care how well you're playing or how poorly you're playing. I should be able to look at you on the course at any time. I should have no idea how you're playing. We've challenged them to think differently. We've challenged them to grow. We've challenged them to enhance their ability to handle situations in a more positive way. There are more smiles. The interaction with the team, the teammates, has been, it's always been positive, but it's been more positive than ever before. Both the baseball team and the women's golf team have had a tremendous start to their season. Baseball, which had the first no-hitter since 2014 and has had one of the best starts to the season in recent years, has a lot of hope for what is to come. The women's golf team, which in the past three years has had three conference titles and three national appearances, believe that with the mindset they have going into the spring season, they will have success. With WPNN, I'm Becky Kopp. Saturday marked senior day for the Statesmen, and the men's basketball team had their last regular season win against Missouri Valley. The squad finished with the day the squad finished the day off with a score of 107 to 93, which is their ninth straight victory. After the win, coaches, players, and fans cut down the nets in celebration of the conference title, which also punched their tickets to nationals. Tickets for the NAIA D1 Men's Basketball Championship in Kansas City are available since Monday. Contact Jill Thompson at 641-673-1018 or at thompsonj at wmpen.edu or come by her office located at Gymnasium 102. But first, the Statesmen have to focus on their first game of the conference tournament against Baker University. Cheer on the Navy and Gold tomorrow, March 2nd at 7 p.m. in Penn Gymnasium. Spring semester is rapidly going by and students are beginning the eighth, the eighth week of spring semester, which means midterms. However, with midterms here, it also means that spring break is just right around the corner. A lot of the spring sports on campus are known to take trips to warmer climates to prepare for their spring season. Women's golf head coach Nick Rule talks about the plans for spring training 2017. Spring training 2017. We're going to Las Vegas. Um, and we, in Las Vegas and Mesquite, Nevada, um, we've got 63 holes of golf planned, um, playing, you know, at the AJGA headquarters, um, which, is a, which is the biggest junior association in the country, um, at Angel Park. Uh, and then, you know, we're going to play uh, Falcon Ridge and Mesquite, Nevada. Anyway, beautiful golf courses, beautiful practice facilities, everything that we need to prepare ourselves for the spring season. So um, we're going to be grinding off the rust, competing, um, and, uh, and also just getting ready for our season. Baseball and softball also travel to Arizona for the spring break. Various other students on campus will be taking their own trips across the country as well. This has been another edition of WPNN. From all of us at the Commun Digital Communications Program at William Penn University, thanks for watching.